work on this computer. Wonderful. Okay, so welcome everybody. And we're gonna go ahead and get started on our first slide. Yay! Yay! Maybe. Okay, maybe we're not gonna go because it's not moving. Okay, I can't, apparently I can't click the slide whenever they have the laser pointer on. That's kind of annoying. So our agenda for tonight, the things that we are going to cover and talk about. We have first safety and our EF partnership, travel plans and our tour itinerary, what students gain from travel, what's included and what's not, and price and dates to mark in calendar, enrolling and submitting questions. If you have questions while I'm talking, it would probably be best organizational wise if you um, write them down and then we come back to them at the end. That way it's just a little bit more organized. So let's go to England and France with a 12 day, with an extension, not a 12 day extension, so 12 days total and extension to Amsterdam. My name is Mrs. McAllister. So a little bit about me, if you, we've never met before. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I am the French teacher at Helias. I have been on one, two, three, four EF tours. Um, one as a student when I was in high school, when I was between my junior and senior year. And then I've led two as a teacher. And then uh, the fourth one was what we were supposed to go on this last summer, but for obvious reasons, we did not go on that tour. Um, why I travel is because I think that we have this wonderful opportunity to see the world that God has created for us, and I just want to know what it's like out there. Um, but then for students, it is incredible personal growth because no matter what, whenever you go and you travel, you never fully come all the way home again because once you make your home in another country or another city or wherever you never get to fully come home because part of you is always over there in that other country or city which means you get to have home all over the world and i just think that that's a really beautiful concept so here are some images from the places that we're going to go we've got notre dame in paris we've got london i believe this is the interior of notre dame and then we've got some Amsterdam canals. We've got this beautiful beach um, side, beach side, this beach <laughs> in France, which is wonderful. And um, the first question is, why should we plan for 2022 travel now? Um, I think one reason is because I always do it, um, because we always want to give you plenty of time in advance. But also right now, we just kind of really need something to look forward to this has been a year where we had to just stop which has been beautiful and wonderful for a lot of reasons to just take a breath but now i think we need something to look forward to doing then we also need a chance to reconnect in a world that feels distant and remote right now we've kind of all been in our own little bubble but then the other reason why is we can spread payments out over a really long period of time. Um, Crystal, do you have a question? No. Oh, okay. I, I felt, I hear you talking, so I wondered if you needed to hear from me. Okay. I need to, can you mute me actually? I can, yes. There we go. Sorry about, I was, just, I didn't want to interrupt you if you had a question. Um, where was I? Oh, spread payments over a longer period of time. Um, this fact that we have a year and a half before we would go means that you get to break down the price of the travel into more digestible bite-sized pieces. And there's an ability to take advantage of EF's risk-free enrollment period, which we will talk more about a little later on. Um, a little bit about our tour company that we work with they're called ef educational tours ef stands for education first and that is the main goal is their like their mission at ef is to make travel an educational experience for everyone who gets to go and make it available to as many people as possible as education should be something that's available to everyone it's like basically a human right and um anyway that's the name of the company they are our educational travel and safety partner. They have over 55 years of experience. They are staff on the ground 365 days a year in over 50 countries, including as a, there's a big office in London, England, which is one of the cities that we're going to visit. Now they have offices all over the world, but one of their main ones is in London. 
They are a world leader in international education and they're accredited just like our school, just like Elias is. Just a quick note about EF. I am so glad to be working with them. Um, I've had, I mean, travel is always gonna have bumps and I've had several bumps along the way. We've had lost passports. We've had people who um, needed to cancel, needed to add, needed to do all kinds of things. One time there was a flood that we had to deal with in Paris and EF has always made it a great opportunity for us. But then beyond that with COVID, it has been so nice to feel confident that my company is gonna take care of my kids. And um, because my kids, as a teacher, I'm a very dedicated educa educator and my kids are super important to me. And having EF on my side with this whole, we can't go to Europe thing, what are we gonna do? This is a huge investment. They made it very, very, um, I should say EF handled it with grace. We had a lot of opportunities that it could have gone really you know, nasty, but EF was like, here is what we're gonna do. Here are your options. Um, we're gonna postpone your tour for a year. If the kids can't go, if the parents can't go or whatever, they can get a refund of this certain amount, which is almost unheard of to get a full, like almost a full refund. They let us be able to, um, if we couldn't travel with the next time, have a voucher. So they, they just really made it, um, they made the best of the situation, I think. Uh, also, they're very they're pretty big, being a pretty big company since they're a world leader. Uh, there are several travel companies that went under that went bankrupt, and EF is not one of them. So that makes me feel more confident too. So a couple of the words about the safety with EF. Um, there's local support and insight. EF provides us with a dedicated personal tour director. Uh, a tour director is the person who stays with you the whole time. So they'll meet us at the airport. They will be with us 24 seven, they'll eat our meals with us, they'll stay in the same hotel with us, they are always with us, there to answer our questions, they are almost always multilingual, not just bilingual, but multilingual, they've been doing this for a very long time, and uh, our tour directors are always wonderful. My personal favorite is the one that I went on uh, last time around, uh, his name is Tom, loved him. Uh, there's also a safety and incident response team, enhanced safety precautions and procedures, and one chaperone spot for every six travelers that enroll. So that means that for every person who goes, or sorry, for every six people who go, one adult will also go, um, just to make sure everything is safe. And then like one to six ratio, like my classroom is like 21 to six ratio of adult to student. So I think that one to six is pretty good. There's also support for my personal safety policies. For example, one of my policies is that you do not, um, you're only ever alone if you are on the toilet or in the shower. I, hear, I want you to always do with another human being so we know where you are. Uh, here's just a quote from um, Michael from New Jersey. He's a group leader like me. My, my particular term analogy for this is a group leader. And he says, whether a student loses a passport on tour and the EF emergency hotline is needed to provide assistance, or most recently, because of COVID-19, EF tours has prioritized our traveler safety experience at the heart of their actions. Um, just one more thing about the EF company. Um, I have a very good relationship with our local representative through EF. Her name is Lindsay, and I've been working with her for several years now and she's great so i know that our person our our connection to the company is always going to take care of us so i i feel very good about it i want you guys to know that i feel very good about it and i wouldn't just pick the cheapest company or the company that is the biggest or something like that i want to pick the best one i think the ef is the best one so let's talk about booking booking there's a peace of mind program um excuse me i just got an email from a student i want to make sure okay I'll take care of that in a minute. Um, anyway, the Peace of Mind program. This benefit is built into every EF tour. It provides groups with flexibility to change the dates and destination of their tours in uncertain times. So I can tell you, we have made use of the Peace of Mind program this year, and it's gone pretty smoothly, all things considered. There's also the Global Travel Protection, which is more like an insurance policy, and that's available to all travelers. This plan provides both pre-departure and post-departure benefits. Um, so the difference between peace of mind and global travel is this is more of an insurance thing. This is something you pay for. This is not something that you pay for it. in addition. This is built into everything. It's saying that they're going to take care of us. 
Then there's also this thing called the risk-free enrollment period, which I think is very, um, very soothing to maybe any uncertainties that you might be having. And that is that newly enrolled travelers can cancel for any reason and receive a full refund anytime bet between now and May 1st of next year. So we would be traveling in July of 2022, but if you, but something comes up in between now and May and you realize, you know, you can't go or you just change your mind, you can get a full refund between now and May 1st. So I think that that is a really uh, generous thing that they are doing. Make sure. So our itinerary, what we'll see, do, eat, and experience. This is the, this is the interesting stuff. This is the exciting stuff. Um, I hope that you guys are excited because I'm honestly very excited. Um, something that is really cool about this particular trip is that I gave some options out there to our current French threes and I said, what is interesting to you guys? What do you find on here on this website of tours that you think is interesting that excites you? And this is the one that they were the most excited about. And so this is the one that I picked because this is the one that they really felt drawn to. So this is a student chosen tour by some of our older French students. And this is the little map of where we'll be going. So over here, hi Anna, could you put your mic on mute for us please? Thanks, appreciate it. I think I'm gonna, let's see. If there are any chats, okay, and also if you have a question that's like immediate, feel free to put it in the chat and I will see it. Oh, where did it go? Okay, so we'll see Big Ben in London. We'll see Notre Dame as best as we can. Um, we will see, I looked this up, it is called the Rijksmuseum. I was a little, I was unsure about this pronunciation because I don't speak Dutch, but that's apparently how it's pronounced. And we will see the D-Day beaches. So some of the you know, quick highlights, we'll visit the Louvre, we'll take a ferry across the English Channel, we'll visit the D-Day beaches and the Khan Memorial, we'll take a tour of the Latin Quarter in Paris, we'll see the Eiffel Tower, and we'll visit the Anne Frank House. There was a question we had um, in one of my classes, um, what is the Anne Frank House? Is that where she lived or is that where she hid? And it is where she hid. So it's where she actually wrote her diary and where she was hiding from the Nazis with her family. So one thing we get to do is maybe, you know, or not maybe, we will, we, we, well, let me take a second. We will get to go on the London Underground. Some of us might be the first time. Um, very exciting thing. It's the oldest underground travel system in the world. Then we'll spend some time at the Omaha Beach and its beautiful tribute to D-Day and the events that took place there at the end of World, or near the end of World War II. So this is just an this is the beautiful sculpture that they have there um, as a modern art representation of this, um, this action that happened. We'll see the Eiffel Tower from across the Seine, um, I, which is just like this view. This view is just iconic, I think. And we will actually get to experience this view with our own eyeballs that are connected to our own brains and our memories and we'll get to have that forever which is just you can't go to Europe as a French student and not see the Eiffel Tower. Then we will walk through the largest collection of artworks by Vincent van Gogh. I know that Vincent van Gogh is a very popular um, these days he's kind of had a resurgence but I love that he's a wonderful artist or was a wonderful artist. And then at the end we're going to come home changed. We're going to be different. Uh, students who travel expand their knowledge of the world around them. They discover more about themselves. They grow more confident and independent and they come to understand more about new people, places, and cultures. Whenever I traveled for the first time as a junior in high school I know that I expected to be, I don't know, excited and different. I didn't, I didn't really expect to be different though. And I came home and I was different. I was still me, obviously, but I felt like my brain had just been expanded two or three sizes that how much more information there is in the world to learn. And it just gave me just this insatiable thirst to learn and to go and to be other places than just the one that I know and love. And I still love my home, but I want to go see these other places. And I think that that's pretty true of um, anybody who travels. So um, from a parent's perspective, um, I, I would love to have any other parent talk about if they've had their kid travel, but from my personal in a situation, my parents have had two of their children go on an EF tour. 
both my sister and I went on EF tours when we were in high school with our, you know, the previous French teacher at Hawaii's. And um, it was just transformative for the both of us. And then my brother then went on and he studied abroad when he was in college. So this is experience, this experience has impacted our family in lots of ways. Um, one is that my dad has spent a lot of time looking at plane tickets because we've just all wanted to travel after we've gone on our own trips. So I think that it really gives you the bug. Then I have this the video. This is a recent video that has been made for um, you know this year and this situation. So let's just go. I know that watching a video through Zoom is not the best quality, but I think if you, we'll, we'll give it a chance. So I think. We can't hear anything. Nothing at all? No, nothing. Oh, uh, well, I was kind of hoping it would work, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to send out any, everything through email as well, and the link on there is watching it. But basically, um, it's just parent, the, the gist of it is the parents are talking about, we think that it was really great for our child. We love the opportunity that it gave them to grow as people. We love that this was something that they could do um, that we couldn't necessarily be able to pull off as a family. And they also talked about they liked the options to pay in monthly or biweekly installments, which we'll talk here about, about in just here. We'll talk about here in just a moment. Let's close that. I sure would like to get my PowerPoint back. There it is. Okay, so personal learning experiences. You can build college competence and earning college credit. One great thing is that you can um, have this as your, kind of in your back pocket, like if you're not sure what to talk about with someone. Like, hey, I had got to go to Europe, and this is something that was really cool that happened to me there. So that's a great icebreaker. Then on a more physical level, you can earn high school credit by doing a project, a little bit of work before the tour, a little bit of work on tour, a little bit of work after the tour, and you can get a high school credit to go onto your transcript, which is, I never had a student take advantage of this, but I think it is a great idea to do this over the summer when you don't have a bunch of other classes weighing down on you, to be able to just really zero in and focus on a topic that interests you. Then there's a college credit option, which is to complete college level work to earn three credits. So this is going to be a bit more involved than uh, the high school project option, because obviously it's a uh, three credits, which is the equivalent of a semester long class. Um, I have also haven't had a student take advantage of this yet, but I think that it's a great opportunity and um, a great way to get credit for something that matters to you. Then as well, you can think of it for your college applications. You can use your tour to inspire a personal essay. Everyone at Helias more or less will write a personal essay at some time. And what better inspiration than traveling to Europe with some of your classmates and seeing what life is like over there. Lots of way, great ways that you can write big or write small um, to kind of set you apart on the college application process. So let's talk about um, group travel versus individual travel, more friendships for a more affordable price. To keep the tour affordable, our group could be combined with another school. And oh, before I go into that, just the group travel gives us an opportunity to make this a much more affordable thing than if we were traveling as, you know, 30 individuals or whatever the number would be. Because, you know, whenever you buy in bulk, you pay less per pound. Whenever you travel in bulk, you pay less per person. That's just how economics works. But anyway, uh, to keep the tour affordable, our school could be combined with another school. Uh, this is pretty common. There's about 50 spots on a tour, and the reason there's 50 spots on a tour is because that is um, how many people fit on a charter bus. That's generally how we get from city to city when plane or train travel is not required and how we get to our hotel, to the city center, et cetera. Um, we normally will take a charter bus. And since there's about 50 seats on a charter bus, there's about 50 seats available in a tour. Uh, that means 
that if we are fewer than 50 people who sign up by like a considerable amount, so there's 30 of us who sign up, they'll probably combine us with a group of 20. And um, that will happen closer to departure that we'll find out about that. We, we could be paired with a group who has similar dates and destinations. This is a great opportunity to meet students from another part of the country, which I think is all absolutely true. Um, you know, anytime you get a chance to meet new people, it's great. And the idea of experiencing a different country with people from your own country that you don't know is a great way to grow in your worldview, to make new friends, and to experience different opinions, which is great. Uh, then, on the other hand, say that there are 50 or so of us who sign up to go on this trip, we would be a, an independent group, or not independent, but we would be our, a self-contained group. It would just be us, and um, that would be great. So that's also an option. If there's enough of us that sign up to be just one, that we don't need to be combined with another group, then great. That was the case for our, tr our, tr our crew that was supposed to go this past summer. Um, we had a completely full group and it was just gonna be us. So we'll see what happens next year as well. Let's talk about the price. I know that's the big, big question is how much does it cost? That's absolutely a fair question. So here's what's included in the price. You get the round trip airfare, safe quality hotel rooms. They're always clean, they're always safe, they're always high quality. You get a full-time professional tour director. That's the person who's gonna meet us at the airport and be with us the whole time. Um, on tour transportation, you shouldn't have to pay for any individual transportation from place to place. It's always going to be um, included on your in your price. An educational itinerary. Everything is planned out for us. I'm not. Um, I'm. I'm very grateful that they have everything planned out for our days. They have everything, like, um, just the details are so great. Then there's guided tours and activities. So we will have little, you know like morning activities or afternoon activities that they plan for us, which like um, tickets to those are included. Breakfast and dinner daily. So we'll usually have breakfast at the hotel and then we'll have dinner together at a restaurant in town. Uh, that means lunch is on your own, which usually you get, you know, an hour, two hours of free time with your a small group that you work with, that you hang out with to go grab some lunch. And that's a great opportunity to go and um, explore the city a little bit but your breakfast and your dinner are included in the price that you pay. So that's 12 times two, that's 24 meals. Then you get 24 seven on tour assistance. You know, you call and someone's gonna be there. A travel support team, a tour donation page. So this is like a GoFundMe thing. Um, basically you just send the link to whoever you think might want to help you you know and say instead of a birthday present this year i'd like for you to contribute to me going to europe next summer and so you send them this link and it's like gofundme and they you know just donate through that and the great thing about that, that is that there's no cost to do that i know on like gofundme only they have like a 20 percent fee or something Every cent that is donated to the tour donation page goes to the traveler. Then there's the project-based learning program, which is the high school credit option we discussed. The Uncommon App College Essay Toolkit, which is a set of resources that they send to everyone who wants them. A travel backpack. Yeah, you get a backpack if you come along with this tour. And the Global Travel Protection Plan, which we talked about a couple of moments ago, and that's the insurance policy that makes sure everything runs smoothly. So things that you'll cover, so things that are not included in the price, would be your passport, visa, and baggage fees. That's like if your, your baggage is over the weight limit, you would have to pay that fee. Uh, spending money, you'd need lunches and snacks, any tips, college credit excursions that are optional. So the tips are things like um, for the bus driver, for our local guides that we get, like our Paris guide, our London guide, our Canterbury guide, um, those people work for tips and so we calculate that and that is an additional cost on top of um, the price of the tour. And then there are a couple of optional excursions on this trip, which um, things like Versailles, that's another like a little additional fee if you want to go to Versailles. So here is the payment plan stuff. The first thing you can do is if you could, if you, you know, twice a week, $118 twice a week between now and July for 18 months. 
Then uh, if you want to pay monthly, it would be $236 for a monthly installment. In full, so this is the number you guys have been waiting for, it would cost uh, $4,355 to go on this entire trip. And um, if you are an adult, so if you're over the age of 18, that price would be $4,955. Uh, adults can travel too. And the reason why there's a difference in price is with people, you know, minors under 18 that usually sleep um, three to a hotel room. And uh, adults have to, like by law, they have to sleep no more than two per room. So it's just the, the hotel fees is basically the additional price there. Um, and this also includes the in required $95 deposit. So the first to, to pick your spot, say, yes, I'm going, it you have to put down at least $95. Then there's also, I forgot to mention this, manual payment options. There are additional restrictions and fees. This is the option to pay when you can. So maybe you don't want to commit to paying um, 118 every two weeks. You're like, I know that how, how my household works. We're going to pay it every couple of months or whatever like that. Um, but there are some additional rules with that. So that's the number though. But the big thing is there is a $300 discount within the enrollment window. So that's essentially, um, so hang on, essentially a uh, change in price. So it would cost only $4,055 if you use this $300 discount, and that it, you get that by enrolling within this specific date window, which we'll talk about what that date is in a second. So that brings down the price uh, considerably. Come now. Here we go. So uh, here's how to make it happen. There are additional opportunities to fund your travel. There is a scholarship for this. If you submit an application for a needs and merit-based scholarship, you can get scholarships through EF. There are also scholarships for travel outside of EF, you know, independent people who want to fund travel. You can look those up. I mean, there's a million of them out there. Then there's the customizable tour donation page we were talking about a second ago. That's the GoFundMe a, a similar situation. Um, send donation page link to friends, family, and loved ones. And then there's the early enrollment discount, which we were just talking about. Receive a $300 discount if you enroll before that deadline. So here is when we would be traveling. We'll travel sometime between Sunday, July 10th and Friday, July 29th. Now the reason it is this way is you'll notice that July 10th to July 29th is not 12 days. It's just saying the earliest time we would leave would be Sunday, July 10th, but in the latest time we would get back is July 29th. And the reason they give us that window is because um, they have to work with times that our excursions are open, like times that Versailles is open, times that the Eiffel Tower is open, and um, availability for hotel rooms, availability for plane travel to get the best price. Pardon me. <coughs> So there is a little bit of some wiggle room here and here, but it is a 12 day tour. Um, you can normally expect that exact dates 90 days before we would travel. So three months before July 10th, we would know our exact travel date, uh, which I know is not great for traveling and doing other um, summer activities, but that's just the best way to get the best price. So it is now, it is time to enroll. Um, the enrollment deadline is Tuesday, December 22nd. So if you enroll between now and Tuesday, you get a $300 discount. And um, you only, whenever you enroll, all you have to put down is $95. And as we talked about before, there is the um, risk-free enrollment. And that is between, if you enroll now and you decide sometime before May 1st that you don't want to go, you get a full refund. So that is kind of a way to make to like make your mind a little less heavy about it. Is you'd still have until May first to say, you know what, actually, probably not going to work out for us. We'll get a full refund. But if you're going to start, you might as well start now because you get those payments to be much lower. All right, this is the enrollment page. How you would enroll is you'd go to this website and you just follow the instructions from there. Um, this is our enrollment number. You would need that to enroll. And you have, if you have questions, submit them 
here. So you just click, you just copy and paste this, which I will send to you all and um, add some questions that way. So please be sure to complete the Google form so I can follow up with any questions that you have. This is the QR code and uh, write down our enrollment number. I mean, you don't have to write it down because I'm gonna send it to you, but yeah, go ahead and write it down if you want to. Oh, there we go. So, I know that was a lot of information, uh, probably very, very fast, but now it is time for questions. So if you have questions, I would love, love, love to hear them. Or if you need me to go back to a slide or something. No, go ahead, Amelia. Amelia. Okay, so we have two. Uh, yeah. You said earlier that a charter bus can hold 50. What if there's over 50 students coming? One more time. What about what if there's over 50 students going? Oh, okay, that's an interesting question. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if we had, say, like, 75 people sign up to go on this trip. What they, for all of this is, um, sorry, I got another, got so much going on in this brain. But what they would do is if it was all from Helias, they would just send us two buses. Um, but then we would also not be going in with another group. Well, hang on. Unless if there were 75 of us, we'd probably, we'd probably get combined with another group um, to fill up that second bus, which is essentially how that would work. Does that answer your question, Amelia? And then does that change the price? Go ahead and ask you. Uh, what about like if uh, if my mom goes with me, would we be able to share in a, a hotel room? That's a very good question. Okay, so how that works is a little. It's kind of annoying, but um, it it kind of makes sense with how hotel rooms work. You would be able to share rooms, but it would be an additional cost for you personally, Amelia, because you'd have to then pay the adult price to only have the two of you in the room. You could do it, it would just cost more. Okay. Okay. Was that everything? Yep. Everything for now anyway. Um, Anna, do we have to do the payment plan? No, you don't have to do the payment plan. Um, let me, that's, the, the, the options are you can do the, the bi-weekly payment plan, so twice a month you pay um, 118 or 110 if you are using the um, 30, $300 discount. Then there's the monthly payment plan. And then there's the pay in full plan. So the pay in full plan would be just putting it all down. Say you've got the money in a savings account, you just put it all down and you're good to go. Then there's the manual plan, which is not a set amount of dates you have to pay. It's just you have to have it all paid by a certain date. So I hope that answers your question, Anna. I have a question. Yes. Um, I have a relative in Europe, and I wanted to see if it would it be possible to meet up with them while over there because I haven't seen them in a while. I think that I yeah I think so. I mean, it depends on where they are, but um, if the best thing to do would be to have them come meet us where we are just because our our travel is pretty tight we don't have a lot of wiggle room so to have them join us for a day or so on our activities and uh, get to see them that way but i i don't see why not i think he's looks like he's frozen but i think that i hope that answered his question do we have any other questions tonight? Anything else I can do for you? You can put it in the chat or you can unmute yourself, whichever you prefer. How many adults are allowed on this trip? Is there like a certain cap? Like, I don't know how you said one chaperone per six students. So what if more than that adult sign up? Is that an issue or? Okay, that's a very good question. So it's one to six for chaperones if you want to be a chaperone. So chaperone would be like you have, your job is to make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be, make sure they're all behaving. But adults can go and not be chaperones, not be in charge of teenagers. So you can go, you can have, adults can go. Um, I just would say if we were getting full and there weren't spots left, um, then I would, those last spots would go to students rather than parents because it's meant to be a student tour. But yeah. I, on our last several tours, we've had many parents who want to go because it's a great opportunity. And how cool is it to get to go to Europe with your kid? That's great. Right. Yeah. 
Um, can, Anna wants to know, can another adult come with me on the trip like my aunt? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think that um, a, common, a, a courtesy thing might be maybe just one parent or one adult per student who goes, but I don't see, that's, that's if we fill up. If we fill up, we might wanna make it just the one parent or the one adult who goes. But um, if there's room, by all means, bring both your parents, bring your aunt, yeah, sure. Anything else we'd like to know? My husband's making dinner, it smells very good. It's kind of distracting. I'm trying very hard to look at your faces instead of smell the spaghetti. Uh, if you opt to pay in full, when is the deadline to pay? That's a very good question. Um, if you opt to pay. Since I, I don't know the date off the top of my head, but I know that it needs to all be paid, I want to say 60 days before we travel, everything has to be paid. But I will uh, make a note to ask that and get a specific answer for when that would be. Will we get an itinerary so we know what time and day our students are? Will we get an itinerary so we know what time and day our students are? I'm assuming that's like what they're doing each day. And if that's what you mean, yes. So once we actually get going on this, we will get a, oh good, we will get a daily breakdown of what we're doing. I think also you can see kind of a um, simplified version of that on our website. You guys need to, there we go. So let's go to EF Tours. And I'll go here, England and France. So this is what I see whenever I go log in. Once you guys enroll, you'll see something similar to this. This is the day-to-day -day breakdown that we have. So it'll say that we'll start in London, then we'll go to Canterbury, Normandy, Saint Malo, Mont Saint Michel, Chartres, Paris, and then finish in in Amsterdam. And um, we'll scroll down. And this is our daily breakdown. So I can, I can get a copy of this. So what I'll do, because I'm going to send a um, follow-up email to everybody who has um, showed any kind of interest. Those of you who are here and those of you who aren't are all going to get this email. And I will include um, this recording so you can refer back to it if you need to. I'll include the PowerPoint that I use. And I will send that itinerary that um, we were just looking at. Do we have some other questions that I can help you with? You're very welcome. Well, good night, kiddos. Okay, well, so if you guys are, uh, if you don't have any more questions for me, um, feel free to go ahead and sign off and go do whatever you've got to do. Um, uh, if you have questions and you want to stay on and ask, go for it or send me an email or whatever it is. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and New Year and everything. So I will, I'll make sure, I'll, I'll be the last person to stay if anybody has any questions. Uh, and the rest of you can just have a wonderful Christmas and talk to you later. Oh, Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. You're welcome. Hannah, did you need something? No, honey, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Anna. Okay, well, I'll see you later then, Anna. Merry Christmas.